welcome you all for another interesting webinar session today's webinar topic is uh, ims network simulation test suite and it will be presented by my colleague uh, mr karthik over to you karthik uh, hi everyone welcome to this webinar uh, this is karthik i am a senior manager uh, for product uh, division in gl communications let us look at a um, brief introduction to lt network architecture e node b uh, e node b um, handles ready resource management functionalities like setting up a bearer maintenance and releasing of the radio bearers it does admission control either allows or denies a radio bearer setup request it routes a packet from uh, ue towards the serving gate gateway it does a data interface it does packet compression to effectively use the radio resource and also it does the ciphering of the user plane traffic it enforces a rate control of established radio bearer based on the bit rate negotiated during setting up the uh, radio bearer the next node is mme that is mobility management entity uh, it is a key control node in lte network it plays important role in mobility management and session management uh, procedures mobility manage uh, nothing but keeping uh, track of the ue where exactly it is currently attached from uh, and also it is um, uh, involved in establishing a default and dedicated bearers uh, of a given quality of service it authenticates the user equipment uh, by querying the hss um, it is a uh, terminating end for nas signaling and it applies a nas security to uh, make sure that nothing is compromised uh, um, as far as signaling is concerned from ue to mme it does uh, involve in uh, bearer management functions including bearer uh, dedicated bearer establishment it selects the sgsn uh, for the proper handover this involves in uh, lawful interception for signaling traffic it also uh, selects the serving gateway and the pdn gateways uh, using variety of um, different parameters it involves in uh, handovers and also roaming uh, apart from these functionalities there are uh, other functionalities related to uh, cs fallback that is maintaining um, sgs association uh, towards the msc um, so whenever um, ue attached to the eps network it indicates the uh, same thing to um, 2g and 3g network over a sgs um, interface so it is initiating a paging procedures towards uh, you know it be whenever msc pages uh, mme for the uh, cs services it also support the sms procedures for cs fallback the serving gateway is a gateway which terminates the interface towards the uh, utron um, uh, ue can be connected to only one serving gateway uh, at a time Okay. It, it does a packet routing. That means it forwards a packet from E node B towards the PDN gateway, and also it is a, a um, local uh, mobility anchor point uh, for uh, inter E node B handover, as well as uh, um, handover from EPC uh, to other uh, 3G P network like um, 2G and 3G. Um, the next important um, element is a PDN gateway. uh it is um, it actually allocates an ip address to mobile um and also it, it initiate most of the time it initiates a, a dedicated bearer setup um, uh, so once it is established uh, it is responsible for uh, transport level packet marking in both uplink and downlink direction that is to uh, setting up differential uh, uh, services code point at ip level based on the qci uh, of associated uh, eps bearer it does uplink and downlink um, service level charging gating control and the rate enforcements uh, also it acts as a pcef to ensure the requested quality of service is established and enforced hss is a master database uh, where all subscription information is stored mm, okay it stores the user identification like mis dn and dmc and ime it stores the security related information uh, which is used for authentication and authorization mm, it also calculate the um, um security triplet um which contains uh, um say ciphering key and uh, integrity key uh, which are used in uh, mme and e node b um the hss is kept updated uh, by other network elements of uh, ue's uh, present location 
This concludes a brief introduction to LTE network. As you can see, LTE network does not have a circuit switched path as present in 2G or 3G network. It is a pure packet data network, so there is no inbuilt support for voice. Now the question is how can we bring the circuit switch features in a LTE network? We can think of uh, different options. The first option is to have two radios in mobile simultaneously. One for data, which is the LTE radio attached to LTE network, which uh, enjoys high bandwidth uh, transfer both uplink and downlink. Second is for CS um, for CS services, which uses a 2G or 3G radio and attaches to the mobile network for circuit switch services. Um, it has some uh, um, uh, disadvantages as uh, keeping two radios active at the same time is going to uh, drain your mobile battery very soon. Also, this option will force network operators to keep 2G or 3G network uh, infrastructure permanently. So, there is no way to phase out those networks uh, in future as well. Next option is to keep uh, only one radio active at a time. Okay, UE attaches to the LTE network, but when call is made, it switches to 2G or 3G network. This is called CS fallback. This option is used as a temporary measure until OLT is deployed. And the next option is to use ODT applications. So already many um, consumers are um, using uh, third party applications like uh, Skype and WhatsApp. In this service, um, in this uh, service providers do not play any role except um, getting paid for a data used for um, those ODT application. Um, uh, at the revenue perspective at present, the voice services consume less than 10% uh, percentage of network bandwidth. It generates more than 70% uh, of the uh, revenue. With the ODT uh, application, service providers stand to lose this uh, voice revenue. The important drawback of OTT applications are they cannot ensure quality of service uh, of um, voice call as uh, this voice traffic uh, must compete with other data intensive applications like FTP download, video streaming, etc. Service providers must now attract customers back to their voice services by providing a better quality of experience. OLT is a perfect answer for um, above problems. OLT uses IMS network for uh, providing uh, voice services. IMS was introduced in 1999, okay, almost uh, 15 to 16 years back. IMS is a framework uh, for delivering IP multimedia services. IMS deployment uh, did not reach its real potential in the past as um, there was always um, an alternative available uh, um, there. Uh, for example, in 3G, it did not become popular because there is always a circuit switch uh, um, uh, built in within the 3G uh, network. So there is no compelling reason to IMS uh, for voice services. So as LT is a pure data network, that, uh, to deploy voice services, IMS is a mandatory requirement. So what it brings uh, benefit is a single network. So there is only one uh, radio, which is uh, LT. And uh, as LT deployed um, uh, worldwide, the, um, the older technology 2G and 3G can slowly be phased out. Uh, and IMS brings a lot of uh, feature rich uh, um, applications. Okay, it provides a framework where uh, different kinds of um, features, uh, voice related features can be deployed and uh, can be created in future. So that is, um, that is advantage of OLT. Um, that is what we are going to talk about. Okay, now um, let's quickly look at the IMS network architecture. This is a simplified version of IMS network architecture. The IMS multimedia subsystem uh, is an architecture originally defined by 3GVP to provide multimedia services exploiting an all IP domain. The first step towards all IP solution is the separation of control layer from a transport layer. 
Okay, it provides interoperability with other providers. It aims for convergence of services. It, it is a very flexible and extensible uh, solution for uh, which can be used for uh, developing a different applications. Okay, here UE communicates with IMS network uh, through a uh, IP CAN, there is an IP connectivity network. Examples of IP connectivity network um, can be um, LTE, of course, um, GPRS and UMTS, or it can be um, a regular um, SIP connectivity and the fixed line IP, or it could be Wi Fi and WiMAX, etc. As you can see, um, IMS is a common control port um, which can be accessed through uh, any of the IP connectivity access networks. Important network elements in um, IMS network are called uh, uh, CSCFs, um, that is call session control functions. These are essentially SIP servers. Okay. Uh, there are three types of um, call session control functions. Uh, the first one is a proxy um, CSCF. Uh, PCSCF is a SIP server. There is a first uh, point of contact for uh, the user equipment. Uh, all signaling uh, passes through PCSCF. It establishes um, IP security or the TLS um, security association with the um, user equipment. Uh, it can compress and decompress SIP messages uh, in order to save um, uh, bandwidth. It also decides the quality of service required for uh, uh, BRR once the call is established. Um, it also generates a charging records. Okay. Next important um, um, server is the uh, interrogating CSCF. Um, it's another uh, SIP function located at the edge of the administrative domain. That means uh, its ab address is published in the DNS of the domain um, for um, IMS SIP services. Um, so it queries the HSS uh, to select or um, uh, um, among multiple CSCF and also uh, when a uh, CSCF is not assigned to the user equipment. Um, the next element is SCSCF. SCSCF um, is a central function of um, signaling plane in the IMS network. It acts as a SIP registrar. It is responsible for processing the registration of each UE. Um, it authenticates the user, it handles the call processing and call routing functionalities. SCSCF is assigned uh, during initial um, UE registrations where ICSCF uh, picks up um, uh, SCSCF based on its capabilities. And all the SIP signaling from and to, um, uh, to the UE uh, is going to go through um, uh, SCSCF um, subsequently. SCSCF is always located in the home network. Uh, the next important element is um, home subscriber server. The HSS is a master database. It contains uh, subscription related information. It authenticated, um, it authenticate and authorizes the users. It can provide information about uh, user locations as well. HSS also shows a list of SESCFs in an IMS network and their capabilities, which is then used by ICSCF to select um, SESCF among uh, multiple uh, SESCF uh, which are deployed on the IMS network. Subscriber location function. When more than one HSS is deployed in the IMS network, a subscription location, um, subscriber location function is needed to locate the HSS that holds the actual subscription data for a given user. Okay, then let's to, uh, look at how the IMS uh, interfaces with the uh, legacy networks. Um, there are uh, different control functions uh, which are uh, essential uh, to interface with the legacy network. There is a 
breakout gateway control functions, media gateway control functions, and media gateway and signaling gateway um, functionalities. The BGC uh, CF, the breakout uh, gateway control function, determines the next hop for SIP uh, messages that cannot be um, routed by SCSF using a DNS or um, in methodologies. It is responsible for selecting a breakout operator on site for outbound circuit switch call. The circuit switch network can be any legacy network like PSTN or can be other mobile networks as well. Media gateway control function is a central node of a PSTN gateway. It is similar to media uh, gateway controller node in um, VoIP network. It translates SIP messages to uh, ISOP signaling. It controls the media resources used uh, when um, traffic need to flow between IP network uh, and TDM based uh, PSD network. Media gateway is responsible for the conversion of um, IP to TDM. Uh, which involves codec conversions uh, like AMR to uh, PCM, um, ALR, EULA. Then uh, comes a SIP application server. The application server provides specific services to the user. Uh, examples of sub services are instant messaging, presence, video conferencing, and content sharing. IMS provides a flexible architecture to have a SIP based applications to be uh, developed independently and deployed very easily within an IMS network. Once a particular application is developed, we can set filters in uh, SCSEF uh, for that application. SCSEF tries to match these filters before um, making decision uh, uh, for regular call routing functionalities. If SIP message matches this filter criteria, then the SIP message is forwarded to the application server, uh, where the application server uh, implement uh, its own features. The next important aspect of IMS network is policy control and charging. It is nothing but um, the ability to distinguish between the services and apply charging differently for each services. For example, the network must allow high quality of uh, voice service and apply a different charge for it. Um, Here is a PCC and PCC architecture. Uh, the PCRF is a central part in PCC architecture. It selects and provides applicable policy and charging decisions to uh, PCEF. It enables operators to offer differentiated services to their users and can apply premium charge for that service. Application function determines the required quality of service for the service and also provides the service data flow information to PCRF. For example, um, in Volti, PCSEF uh, implements that application function which decides the required quality of service, uh, like guaranteed bit rate, um, as it derives that information from SDP parameter from invite and 200 OK message. It also extracts the service data flow, that is, um, uh, which data flow uh, from a mobile should be treated differently. For example, in this case, um, the voices is uh, uh, voice packets are carried over RTP. So in this case, the source and destination IP addresses and the port number pairs are used to define the service um, um, data flow. Um, then SPR, Subscription Profile Repository. Um, this contains a subscriber and subscription related information. Um, the subscribers allowed services, information about subscribers allowed quality of service and also charging related information. Uh, the final uh, one is um, the online and offline charging systems. The OCS which is online charging system is a credit management system for prepaid charging. 
This allows service providers to charge their customer in real time based on the service usage. Here the network usage is granted by the OCS based on the tariff of the request service and also balance in the subscriber account at present. There are two types of online charging functions. One is a session based like voice calls, the event based uh, like uh, content downloading and SMS etc. Um, the offline charging is mainly used for postpaid uh, customers. Yeah, there is no need for um, checking the credit uh, periodically during the session as this charging is offline and once the service is completed uh, the accounting is updated. Now let's uh, take a look at um, uh, basic IMS registration and simple IMS call. Okay, UE initiates the registration by sending a SIP register message to PCSF. PCSF um, does the DNS query um, and get the uh, ICSF IP address and forwards um, the register message to ICSF. Um, as um, there are many SCSF deployed in the IMS network with the different capabilities, ICSF queries the HSS uh, to get the list of um, uh, SCSF addresses. Okay, then IS, ICSF then pick one of the SCSF um, uh, for this particular user equipment by matching UEs and SCSF capabilities or it could be simply a load balancing mechanism. So once um, uh, a SCSC is selected, um, ICFCF forwards the SIP register message to the SCSCF. Um, okay. SCSCF uh, then um, has to initiate the authentication procedure and queries the HSS to get the uh, authentication parameters. Okay, once it receives the response, it uh, challenges the UE with um, authentication parameter. Okay, so, uh, so PCSEF um, stores the security information from 401 unauthorized, uh, uh, which is originated from uh, SCSEF. It removes the security key information like ciphering key and ident integrity key before forwarding this message to user equipment. Um, then um, IP security association is established between the UE and PSCSF um, uh, using security information uh, UE calculates uh, from its um, uh, master key and uh, PCSCF uh, gets this information from uh, uh, SCSCF uh, in previous uh, 401 unauthorized message. Okay, once the uh, security uh, is established between the UE and PCSCF, um, um, UE again um, sends a SIP register to PCSCF, um, which in turn be forwarded to ICSCF. Okay, so finally, uh, SIP register message um, uh, received at the SCSCF um, and um, SCSCF accepts the SIP registration um, after um, um, uh, verifying its uh, credentials okay, and responds with 200 OK um, for uh, which indicates a successful registration. Once registration is successful, SCSCF also updates the HSS uh, using server assignment request. Okay, uh, which binds um, uh, this particular uh, SCSCF with the particular UE. Okay, so uh, which is essential, uh, for example, if there is an incoming call, okay, um, this SCSCF will automatically be selected to service that particular call as this is uh, going to serve the UE um, um, from now onwards. Now let's uh, look at how um, mobile originated uh, OLTI call is established. Uh, it starts with OLTI UE um, which initiates a SIP invite containing offer with AM or um, narrowband or wideband codec. This request is sent to PCSCF. Um, PCSCF uh, then forwards the invite message to SCSCF. SCSCF uh, checks the um, 
incoming in um, invite message um, so with um, so especially it checks the p preferred service header in the invite and verify whether it, the user is authorized to use ims multimedia services um, if if it succeed uh, then it forwards the message uh, to the destination uh, address or it's going to reply back with 403 forbidden where the call is uh, get terminated um, once the destination um, node um, sends uh, uh, 183 progress message uh, SCSCF uh, forward the same message uh, back to PSCF PCSCF um, analyzes the SDP information and sends the um, authorize and authenticate um, request message to P uh, PCRF um, with related service information such as uh, uh, RTP IP address and port number pair uh, which define the service uh, data flow and also it's going to uh, indicate the required quality of service uh, for the voice call Um, PCRF then initiates a reauth request to the PGW to initiate uh, the creation of the dedicated bearer for voice with the related quality of service and the service data flow information. We didn't get me, then initiate the dedicated bearer um, uh, up to UE. So there are the dedicated um, bearers established between the PDN gateway and the serving gateway and uh, between serving gateway to e node b and the e node b to uh, ue okay so um, the dedicated bears are established at each level uh, with the um, uh, provided um, quality of service so um, so this ensures uh, um, uh, um, the voltage um, uh, voice traffic will not get affected um, uh, by other traffic such as data traffic and other things because this will be prioritized uh, compared to other data traffic. Volte uh, UE can uh, reserve internal resources uh, and confirm resource reservation by sending a SIP update message with a new SDP offer confirming that the selected codec. The media stream is now uh, set to be active. As the preconditions are met, um, the terminating UE can be alerted um, and once the parent answers the call, call can be established. In this section, uh, we can take a look at the different test configurations uh, for testing IMS network. As you can see, uh, multi deployment is very complex as it involves many network nodes, involves um, many protocol interfaces um, and protocols. Uh, then uh, the testing becomes more challenging compared to any other previous telecom deployment. So every network element has to perform perfectly to make this possible. So testing has to start from the lab. Um, start with testing individual network node uh, for a particular protocol interface. All protocol procedures must be tested with positive and negative test scenarios. Here for example, um, HSS um, can be tested in an isolated environment by loading uh, diameter uh, sessions to query SESF locations and subscription information about the user and also HSS ability to calculate um, um, authentication vectors uh, for a particular uh, mobile. Uh, in similar fashion, online charging system can be um, uh, tested with various scenarios uh, like um, manipulating um, um, available balance um, such as like with has, uh, which has no balance um, sufficient balance and uh, having a balance which uh, will not last for the entire uh, call session. 
once the individual protocol interfaces are tested the network elements must be tested by enabling multiple uh, protocol interfaces at the same time we call uh, this is a wrap around testing here we test the duty's ability to initiate a different protocol procedures in an organized manner to execute a particular feature it also uh, can be used to test duty's ability to um, convert uh, uh, one protocol to the other protocols um, one good example is um, sip to ss7 um, conversion in a mgcf once individual network elements are tested then the next phase is to uh, test the network subsystems in this case uetron epc and ims network must be uh, tested in isolation to de uh, determine um, any issues at the network segment level here we are looking at uh, uetron testing which essentially going to be uh, test only the e node b part as we know um, um, there are uh, quite a bit of features um, are added to e node b to support um, olt these features for example include semi persistent scheduling uh, tta bundling and rohc these functionalities uh, comes with their own complexity and it is important to test the e node b uh, for um, voice services Mm, when these um, features are enabled here the main aim is to uh, test voice quality when high data rate background traffic is also flowing at the same time the gl vqt testing can be used to find the degradation of the voice quality the next test configuration um, is to test the epc in isolation then the epc does not handle ims signaling we must ensure that it is not the source of issues during deployment here again we must test epc's ability to process voice packets that is rtp packets without any degradation it includes testing um, dedicated bear establishment for voice services and EB epc's ability to forward voice rtp packets under heavy um, background data load conditions epc must also be tested for its ability to handle ims sip signaling packets under heavy load conditions the next step is to um, to test the ims network in isolation this is a very important um, um, this configurations where we focus on um, ims network nodes and its features um so it is you can consider it as a wrap around testing but not um is uh, not on a, a individual network element but uh, the entire ims network so we may test the ims ability to register uh, uees with authentication make calls between ue within the home network and its ability to handle the roaming subscriber Uh, and its ability to connect to the subscriber in other IMS network, and also um, making calls to other legacy network um, such as SS7, uh, and also ability to um, forward SMS messages to SMS center uh, when the SMS is carried over SIP message method. and testing related to security like um, ipsec tls and srtc srtp must also be tested in this scenario the next uh, test configuration is psd and gateway testing we must test ims network ability to interface with the uh, legacy psd network it includes um, testing of mgcf ability uh, to convert sip signaling to isop signaling as you know um, isop has a different variants and a different country flavors okay it is important to test all flavors where um, this ims is uh, going to be deployed another important aspect of um, uh, this psd and gateway testing is to test media gateway 
Media gateway must be tested for codec conversion, packet loss concealments, jitter buffer management, echo cancellation, etc. It must be tested for the ability to generate and detect embed events like DTM of digits and uh, tones. Uh, RTP out of events also must be detected on the RTP side and uh, the inbound events must be uh, generated at the PC. The next test configuration is to test circuit switch fallback. It is estimated um, around 1.5 billion LT users um, by end of 2016 and of which around 310 million uh, OLT subscribers uh, by end of this year. There is a huge gap between uh, LTE deployment um, and the OLT deployment, OLT users. Um, so it will take uh, many years to move all um, LTE users to um, use OLT services. Until then CS fallback um, is going to stay here and it is essential to test um, um, various CS fallback features mm, such as location update for um, non-EPS services, uh, paging for non-EPS service something um, such as MT call and um, uh, MC detach and uh, um, more specifically on SMS delivery via CS core um, network. In this test configuration, both EPC and IMS together are subject to test. Um, here, UNODE bees uh, are um, simulated um, uh, with um, thousands of UEs. And also, on the other side, PSD network also emulated. This enables us to test um, calls between mobiles and also calls between mobiles and legacy network. As we know, um, UNODBs with its AIR interface operation is a key element of empowerment. So uh, this particular test uh, with all network element except the AIR interface and UNODB enables direct uh, validation of the rest of the network. And also um, um, simulating um, actual user equipment at the AIR interface is very expensive. So this is a, um, a cost-effective method to uh, test um, a rest of, uh, rest of uh, OLT network except the AIR interface. The final test configuration um, is end-to-end -end testing. In this test configuration, the entire network um, is tested. Um, so it can be used um, in uh, pre-deployment, trials and post-deployment um, uh, of um, LT and OLT network. Um, here except mobiles, um, all uh, network elements are real. The mobiles are used as a testing device. OLT calls are made um, between mobiles and simultaneously um, background data is sent in both uplink and uh, downlink uh, direction from the mobile. Voice, video and data quality um, is measured to verify the real-time services like voice do not suffer any degradation. And, uh, th and this particular test scenario can be used as a dry test to check uh, network coverage. So far we have seen uh, different test configuration to test IMS signaling and media testing. Now let us discuss about the policy control and the charging aspect of IMS network. Here is a simplified version of how PCC rules and charging, um, online charging um, is applied when mobile attached to the LTE network. Once mobile is connected to the LTE network, PDN gateway uh, which also acts as um, PCEF inform PCRF about um, UE's IP connection establishment by sending credit control request message. Here, uh, PCEF requests policy rules from PCRF. 
PCRF then checks with SPR about um, subscription information. PCRF uh, then checks with online charging system if the service can be allowed by um, sending um, um, spending limit request message to uh, OCS. On successful response, PCRF applies uh, PCC rules in uh, PCEF. This PCC um, rules include uh, uh, quality of service parameter, uh, gating control, um, that is whether to enable or disable the packet flow, and the usage monitoring. Okay, PCEF um, is then periodically uh, checks with um, OCS about um, available credit uh, by sending the credit control request. Once uh, the no balance condition reach, the service can be terminated. Mm. Here we'll uh, take a look at uh, how the application function uh, can initiate policy and charging function. Application function in IMS network can also uh, initiate uh, PCC rules and charging functions. A good example for this scenario is uh, OLT call itself. During OLT call establishment, PCSCF analyzes the SDP parameters from invite and 183 response. It then derives a quality of service parameter based on selected codec and bit rate required. Um, then uh, PCSCF uh, then starts PCC um, procedures by sending accounting and authentication requests to the PCRF. This request uh, contain um, application function identifier, quality of parameters like um, QCA and guaranteed bitrate etc. Uh, it also includes service data flow to identify where the PCC uh, rule must be applied. This SDF um, is um, nothing but um, IP address and port, uh, port number pairs uh, for RTP traffic. Once RT, uh, PCRF receives this AR request, it gets a subscription profile uh, from SPR. It then decides whether the service can be allowed or not. And the rest of the procedures are same as the previous slide. Uh, the PCRF checks with OCS about the spending limit and and apply um, PCC rules in PCEF. This again initiate the dedicated barrier establishment in EPC and EUATRON. And uh, once the call is established, um, here SCSEF then periodically checks the credit limit um, on ROA interface. Um, GL Maps uh, emulation product can emulate all these interfaces uh, to test um, all policy and charging functions um, in a greater detail. Um, here is a example um, snapshot of um, online and offline charging. Um, here you take a look at um, here uh, this is online charging where it starts with the credit control request um, during the call establishment mm. and uh, this credit control request uh, being sent periodically um, uh, to get credit for a specified amount of time until the call gets terminated. Um, Offline charging uh, is similar, but here there is no need to send credit requests for um, uh, for a call periodically. Here um, it starts with authentication uh, accounting request, uh, and uh, the same thing will uh, get applied if any of the um, um, important parameters uh, or uh, the call state gets updated using reinvite. Uh, there is an interim. Uh, uh, remember that it, this is not a periodic accounting request. And finally, when call is ended, um, the accounting request is going to uh, determine how much uh, the call should get charged. I will conclude this presentation um, by giving a brief introduction to our MAPS uh, emulation uh, test tool. 
GLS uh, maps map stands for message automation and uh, protocol simulation it is a, a generic framework for protocol simulation and traffic generation it can simulate almost all network nodes in uh, TDM IP uh, visor IP and all wireless protocols like uh, 2G 3G LT and IMS network um, map simulation framework gives the user the unlimited ability to edit protocol messages and uh, find control of um, um, call scenarios through scripts um, GL maps is designed to work with the different physical interfaces like uh, T1E1, IP, STM1 and STM4 uh, FXY, uh, FXX and many more um, map simulation is uh, available in uh, GUI and also in CLA form. The maps client library can be used to integrate um, maps features into third party applications. Maps also uh, comes with a um, GUI remote controller uh, which can be used to control various network node simulated by maps uh, which can be controlled from a central location. Uh, apart from uh, protocol simulation, uh, maps also can simulate uh, various traffic. So maps supports um, voice transmission and reception over IP, TDM, um, RAW and STM1, STM4 interfaces. It can also generate and receive in-band events like digits, stones, fax, fax etc. Uh, maps can also generate data traffic like HTTP and FTP. Traffic options are available um, in high de density options uh, which can generate um, tens of to uh, thousands of RTP sessions and uh, it can generate uh, data rate at uh, line rate um, at uh, 1 gig and uh, 10 gig using a high density option. The traffic simulation include uh, support for various codecs. Almost all narrowband and wideband codecs deployed in uh, um, telecom networks uh, from TDM, VoIP and wireless networks are supported. Um, the reason addition to these codecs is the EVS codecs. Um, to summarize, um, all LT and IMS network elements are emulated by uh, using MAPS framework. Um, uh, this ensures uh, learning curve is minimal um, as a GUI and uh, CLI interface remains same irrespective of um, which uh, protocol is simulated.